My presentation this morning will be about um, the use of plastic in photographs um, with a special look at color photography. Like photography, the history of plastic starts in the 19th century. In the early 1830s, at the same time Daguerre and Talbot were searching for methods to capture images in the camera obscura, a handful of chemists made some important discoveries when mixing cotton and other cellulose materials with nitric acid. Following these pioneer works, Swiss chemist Christian Schoenbein established the conditions of controlled nitration of cellulose. Although his wife had forbidden it to do so, Schoenbein occasionally experimented at home in the kitchen. It is said that one day, when his wife was away, he spilled some, a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid during one of his clandestine experiments at home. After using his wife's cotton apron to mop the spill, he rinsed it up and hung it over the stove to dry, only to find that the cloth spontaneously ignited and burned so quickly that it seemed to disappear. In fact, Schoenbein had converted the cellulose of the apron with the nitro groups added from the nitric acid, serving as an internal source of oxygen. When heated, the cellulose was completely and suddenly oxidized. With this incident, Schoenbein had accidentally discovered a way of producing gun cotton, also known as nitrocellulose. Gun cotton soon became of interest as an explosive and in the manufacture of collodion a cellulose solution in an alcohol ether mixture. Uh, collagen was first used medically as a dressing, but in 1851, Frederick Scott Archer discovered that collagen could be used as an alternative to albumin on glass photographic plates, and that it reduced the exposure time necessary for making an image. This method became known as the wet plate collagen or wet collagen method. With the wet collagen process, one of a kind positive images with a silver image bearing collagen binder could be produced on glass. The umber types and on Japan iron, sheet, uh, Japan iron sheets, the uh, tin types. Umber type and tin types were often placed in protective cases, mostly made of wood covered with embossed leather or papier mache. Um, in 1856, Samuel Peck, one of the owner of Scovia Company, which manufactured this case these cases for photographs patented the union case made with a mixture of sawdust, saw dust, sorry, uh, shellac and dyes, one of the earliest form of uh, thermoplastic material. Cellulose nitrate plasticized with camphor was patented in England by Alexander Parkes and sold as Parkesine in 1856 and later at Zillonite in 1869, before being registered as celluloid in 1870. And the introduction of Parkinson is generally regarded as the birth of the plastic industry. Although Parkes <coughs> took a number of patents for his newly discovered material, it was not until the Hyatt Brothers of New, Jer of New Jersey developed in it into celluloid in 1870 that its commercial potential began to be realized. It was first widely used as a substitute for ivory, horn, or tortoise shell. Celluloid was originally a trademark, but it's now ge a generic term for cellulose nitrate plasticized with camphor. In photography, the most important application for celluloids was as a film base due to its high transparency, homogeneity, and flexibility, and we heard a lot about it yesterday. Eastman was the first to manufacture a commercial transparent roll film for public sale in 1889. And yes, Andrew, our date match. Uh, <laughs> the availability of this flexible film made possible the development of Thomas Edison's motion picture camera in 1891. Meanwhile, prints with a silver image suspended in a collagen binder on a Barida paper support became popular. In the 1880s, collagen POPs, together with gelatin POPs, replaced the traditional albumin silver prints before being supplanted themselves by gelatin DOP paper, papers. The introduction of autochrome glass transparencies in 1907 fueled the public's desire for color prints. A flurry of assembly processes was introduced during the first decades of the 20th century to fulfill these growing needs. 
Among them, Frederick Eugene Ives' um, three-layer color printing process called iChrome. Also known as S. Ives prints, iChrome print consists of a base paper with a blueprint and two sheets of celluloid with a gelatin layer dyed yellow or magenta cemented together. And you can see a detail here on the corner. Ives later developed the polychrome a process he, put, he introduced in 1929. And polychrome uh, prints are uh, two uh, layer image, uh, consist of two separation image, one blue on paper, and one uh, dichroid red-orange on a celluloid base also cemented together. Other example of separation prints on celluloid sheets cemented together to form a full color image include the autotype carbro on celluloid that we see here. Uh, carbro was introduced in 1919, and celluloid sheets were usually, uh, were normally used to transfer the pigmented gelatin layers to the t uh, from the tissue to the final image support, but in this case, uh, uh, the image is not transferred and the three uh, celluloid are just cemented together to form an image. And uh, in the case of this, the image is actually over an, uh, a sheet of paper. So it's, it's not seen by transparency, but by reflected, uh, yeah, reflectance. Um, Amira prints uh, produced with a dye imbibition process uh, uh, invented and commercialized in 1932 in Hamburg, Germany, or another uh, variant of the techniques where uh, sheets of plastic materials uh, dyed with separation colors are put together to form uh, a reflective print. The period of 1930-1940 saw the initial commercial development of today's major thermoplastics. Polyvin polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, these names are so difficult to say, uh, polymethyl methacrylate, and low-density polyethylene. However, cellulose nitrate and celluloid continue to be used uh, as the base support of most photographic materials, including the additive color screens, roll films such as lignose, lumicolor, film color, alticolor, and aqua color. Um, and here you see uh, a, a role of alticolor, um, a substitute for autochrome. Uh, in the 1930s, early form of resin-coated photographic paper were developed to speed up washing and drying time in automatic coin-operated photo booth. The direct positive uh, photographic paper, uh, photographic paper base uh, used in the machine was coated on both sides with a water-resistant polymerized vinyl compound in order to minimize processing solution penetration into the paper support and thus dramatically reduce the washing and drying times. The vinyl compounds used were polymerized vinyl acetate or vinyl chloride or a mixture of the two. Uh, the concentration of the polymerized vinyl acetate could be varied to suit the coating conditions and the thickness of the coating desired. 1936 saw the introduction of Kodachrome and Aquacolor Noi, the first direct positive integral color films on acetate base. The, commerciali the commercialization of, the dye of these dye coupling materials marked the beginning of the modern era of color photography. With the popularity of color transparencies, the demand of, for color prints increased. And in 1941, Kodak introduced a printing service for what it size, mini color prints on co uh, from Kodachrome slides. The printing of mini color was done at Kodak in direct reversal Kodachrome chemistry. Although fiber based papers could be used, a white opaque pigmented acetate base had been adopted because it provided an extremely smooth surface that could not be achieved with paper. The smoothness of acetate minimized the risk of model arising from the lower cyan emulsion layer, reflecting a possible unevenness of the base. Another, another reason for choosing the plastic base resided in the fact that in Kodachrome reversal processing, the print was developed four times, first in a black and white developer, then in three successive color developers. And it was very important to completely clear residual chemicals in between each development. So since the plastic base doesn't absorb any chemical, washing was therefore more thorough and faster than with the paper base. Plastic, however, was more expensive, 
to produce than paper. So prints were made small to compensate the high cost of materials. The black margins typical to direct positive prints were trimmed, uh, trimmed off, and the corners rounded to eliminate sharp, stiff corners. In 1943, Ansco followed suit and launched Ansco Printen, a die coupling material on white pigmented acetate base. Uh, Printen was very similar to millicolor, except that it was processed in a chromogenic chemistry with incorporated couplers, as opposed to the added coupler of the Kodachrome. Uh, chemistry. Uh, Gaspar color OPEC soon followed and it was the first commercially available silver dye bleach printing materials. It featured a white pigmented acetate base that was actually manufactured by ANSCO. Uh, like all other color materials at the time, uh, its use remained restricted to uh, the armed force until the end of the war. The advent of World War II in 1939 brought plastics into great demand largely as substitutes for materials in short supply, such as natural rubber. In 1942, English chemists John, John R. Winfield and J.T. Dixon patented polyethylene terephthalate, uh, also known as polyester, but due to wartime secrecy restriction, their discovery was not made public until after the war. That same year, Kodak and AFA developed their dye coupling color uh, negative and positive system, Coda color and Agfa color. The color photographs were printed on fiber base, uh, Barida paper. During the war, waterproof aero mapping photographic papers were produced for the armed force <laughs> service by melting a cellulose derivative similar to that used for film base and coating the hot melt on paper. After the war, the hot melt method was replaced by coating paper with a solvent solution of cellulose acetate, but the expensive method met with limited success. The decade that followed the end of the war saw the development of polypropylene and high-density polyethylene and the growth of the new plastics in many applications. New developments made it possible to create the ribbed sheets, the ribbed sheets, used with lenticular images, a technology that was created in the 1940s and became extremely popular in the 1960s. Early examples of lenticular prints were made with two images that, um, that either gave a parallax perspective on the same image or switched between two images, like you saw in the previous slides. Uh, to make a lenticular image, each composite image is divided into parallel strips and distort it so that each strip is squashed thinner. The two images are interlaced, so one very thin strip of one image is printed next to a strip from the next. A lenticular ribbed sheet is then applied on top of the interlaced image. The lens refract the images beneath them so that as the viewer's point of view changes, the image scene changes, creating the illusion of movement. Most of the screens early on were heat embossed in PVC. Today, lenticular plastic sheets exist in a wide range of materials, including acrylic, amorph am amorphous polyethylene terephthalate, <laughs> APET, uh, polyethylene terephthalate glycol, e PETG, uh, polycarbonate, polypropylene, PVC, and polystyrene you know, a any kind of plastic, I guess. Uh, lenticular images are now typically printed directly on the plastic sheets, no, no more applied um, on top of uh, image. And uh, the technology is usually UV-cured inks. In 1948, Kodak launched a safety film used using a cellulose triacetate base that would soon replace um, completely the highly flammable cellulose uh, nitrate base in the motion picture industry. That same year, Edwin Land revolutionized photography with the invention of instant photography. The early Barida paper support introduced in, 18, uh, in 1948, sorry, were rapidly modified the years that followed the launch of Polaroid Type 40. Layers of various polymer were added to improve image sharpness, print flatness, or as a protective coating to prevent image degradation. And you see here a nice cross-section provided by the graphic atlas. 
1952, uh, DuPont produce, introduced mylar, a biaxially oriented polyester film that is chemically inert and dimensionally stable. Its excellent mechanical properties and dimensional stability made it an ideal support for certain photographic applications. Um, in 1955, polyester was adopted as a base for a graphic arts film and Kodak dye transfer matrices, eliminating the considerable difficulties experienced until then with exact registration of the different color during printing. So even though plastic is not directly present in uh, dye transfer prints, uh, plastic played an important role in the final uh, result. Cibacoum was announced at the Photokina Fair of 1963. Uh, the strongly acid bleach solution of the silver dye bleach precluded the use of barita coated fiber-based paper. Early Cibacoum materials were manufactured on pigmented cellulose triacetate base, uh, which made their cost too high to be competitive and for Cibacoum to become a hit in the consumer market. Also in 1963, Polaroid introduced Polar Color, the first color instant film. However, Kodak Instamatic camera and its film cartridge were the most important novelty for amateur photography that year. Millions were sold, and as a result, the demand, the demand for color prints increased dramatically. Soon after, and for the first time in history, the number of color photographs taken surpassed that of black and white in the US, and the trend will never be reversed. That growing demand created pressure on the photo finishing industry, improvements of wet processing in respect of size, performance, and special requirement of processing machine came against difficulties. Since the early days of the negative po uh, positive color processing, color paper had required long processing times. The fiber-based paper absorbed large quantities of chemicals that had to be washed out. It also needed to be dried out on large ferrotyping drums. And you see some of those drums in this image here. The drum occupied considerable space and consumed a lot of energy. The poor resistance of tearing of the, to tearing of the white photographic paper also limited the speed of, and the length of the machines. In order to meet the need of expanding markets and the economic requirements of photo finishers, in the aviaries were made to find a base material that would limit waste of water and chemicals, permit quick and easy drying, and thereby considerable, considerable reduction of total processing time. In, Octo in October of 1968, Kodak announced the launch of Ectacolor 20RC, a resin-coated paper that dried quickly to a high gloss without the usual ferrotyping procedures. ACFA followed suit in 1970, and launch Agfa Color PE. RC paper affor afforded many advantages of barita over barita coated paper, including reduced washing and drying time, the dry strength and stiffness of the paper was maintained during processing, permitting faster processor speeds and reduced tearing propensity. Resid coated paper prints could be finished and dry within 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, they had improved dimensional stability and did not curl upon drying, thanks to the curl control built into the product. RC rapidly replaced fiber base for color print. Uh, for black and white, the change was slower because the advantage of RC were less evident uh, than for color. Two stability problem quickly arise, uh, quickly became apparent after the introduction of RC paper. They have been extensively discussed in the literature. The first problem was cracking of the polyethylene, referred to as resin cracking by the manufacturer. Resin cracking results from the oxidation of the polyethylene polymer and embrittlement of the polyethylene paper uh, uh, layer. Oxidation eventually caused the, the emulsion to crack, leading to a disfiguring gray surface. The second problem was the formation of red spots and silver mirroring in image areas. The manufacturers quickly realized that both deterioration reactions were accelerated by the presence of the white pigment, titanium dioxide, in the polyethylene, and its reaction with light to form free radicals that will then attack uh, the silver image or the uh, plastic layer. Both problems were eventually reduced or eliminated with the incorporation of stabilizer, antioxidant, 
and peroxide or oxygen scavenger. And by stabilizing the pigment before its incorporation into the polyethylene. The next major innovation in photography happened in 1972 when Polaroid introduced its revolutionary one step SX70 instant camera in film, a marvel of photographic engineering that became an immediate success. SX70 integral films are complex, multi layered photographs encased between two sheets of polyester clear at the top and pigmented black at the bottom. The image receiving layer and the polymeric acid layers are proprietary and have uncertain composition. The tremendous success of Polaroid, and we heard a little with Peter yesterday about the lawsuit between Kodak and Polaroid uh, about this product. Um, so the tremendous success of Polaroid led competitors like Kodak and later Fuji to also introduce their own instant material. This film also contains multi layers of clear polyester, but they have a, I mean, they have a different uh, chemistry. And, and if, you, if you look at the two, you know, they're, they're, they have a different look anyway, and they have a different uh, layering. Um, the 1980s saw the development of several dye diffusion products, including the large Polaroid 20 by 24 and the short-lived Ektaflex and Aquachrome Speed. But, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, courting the amateur market, I went ahead for, my, for myself. Uh, Siba Gagi commercialized Sibachrome on RC paper in 1974. The RC base was much cheaper than acetate, and the product enjoyed some popularity for a while. In 1979, Siba replaced its white pigmented plastic base with voided polyester, uh, where the opacity is created by micro bubbles rather than white uh, pigment. Uh, and the bubble creates an internal light scattering that gives this illusion of white color. Uh, so, I already said that, but I will repeat. The 1980s saw the development of several dye diffusion products, uh, the large Polaroid 20 by 24, and the short-lived Ektaflex and Aquacorum Speed, for example. But uh, most informal digital imaging and printing technology made their entrance on the scene. In 1994, Durst introduced the Lambda printer at Photokina. Desktop and wide format inkjet printers rapidly took the lead of the industry, and during the 1990s, new consumables are introduced at a dizzying pace. The new digital enlargers and printers made the once cumbersome production of large print much easier than ever, and wall size photographs became a common feature in both fine art and commercial application. Today, mounting this large print onto rigid substrates had, has become a must. Mounts and adhesives become irremediably part of the photographic object. The most popular substrate include aluminum composite materials with a foam polyethylene core, such as dye bond, or expanded closed cell PVC extruded into rigid boards like Sintra. And the mounting adhesive also often contain a plastic core. So more plastic layers added to our photographs. Um, uh, a wide variety of plastic films made of PVC, polyester, polyethylene, polyvinyl fluoride, polycarbonate, etc., is also available for laminating. And uh, while a, a clear acrylic PMMA are cemented to the face of prints to provide the now familiar wet look of contemporary production that uh, we will hear more about today, uh, later this afternoon. Uh, finally, the evolution of inkjet and media uh, inkjet inks and media photograph can today be printed on many different plastic substrate, including RC paper, vinyl, vinyl or PVC, polyester, SGPE, etc. Um, latex inks introduced by Hewlett Packard in 2008 are the latest development in inkjet ink technology. Also known as resin inks, they use a, thi a type of polymer to encapsulate the pigment which are then suspended in water as a carrier. Heat is used to evaporate the water away and to activate the polymer to bind the pigment to the media. So now the plastic are part of, uh, of the image uh, materials. And Pablo will uh, tell us more in a few minutes. 
I would like to thank you all for listening to me and uh, thank the uh, Jay for inviting me here and the committee for making my uh, coming possible. Thank you.